time please pray for the truckers yes. hallelujah yes. and uh we got more brothers that's going to be uh getting cdls here soon which is going to be a blessing simply because it's going to help with the uh the rotation and it's going to help with the camaraderie and the brothers and everything so we're doing well you know what i mean and uh um, i just thank y'all for the position that we're in because a lot of folks wish they were in this position that we are in you know what i mean to be set apart to have uh business running we thank y'all for giving elementary division to put the business together because it really it really is rewarding at the end of the day you know what i'm saying hallelujah yep yeah, well i'm glad all is well today i'm glad texas got a chance to come on in here it's good to see y'all it really truly is because uh it's best that y'all came up here because i sure wasn't getting down there on time soon <laughs> oh yeah i did hallelujah no you're right you're right well you know what i mean but uh anyhow man it is a privilege. It really truly is a privilege to stand before y'all, and I feel honored to do it at the same time. You know what I mean? Um, and I try to say I won't be before you long, but I never know, so I'm going to stop saying that. <laughs> today, hey, look here. Let me tell y'all something. We're going to find out today what kind of fire you really have. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. We really truly are. We're going to speak on y'all's fire today. Hallelujah. We're going to speak on the fire of y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we know that the fire of Yah has to be in you if you are compelled to obey. Okay? His fire is very important. I'm talking about the baptism with fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're definitely going to talk about his fire today. Deuteronomy 4, 24. For Yahweh, your Elohim, is a consuming fire, even a jealous Yah. Now, he is a consuming fire, but you can be consumed many ways. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, we're going to get into it. Y'all know we're going to get deep. But we need to make sure, you need to make sure that your election is sure. You need to make sure that the fire remains. You cannot allow the fire to die down. You cannot allow the fire to come to a little match, you know what I'm saying? To the point where it's put out. Because we've seen a lot of people's fire being put out. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of folks that done left the ministry. A lot of folks that done turned their backs. A lot of folks who was coming communal, but they turned back to go do their own thing. Putting that fire out. Hallelujah. So first we're going to tell you what fire is. Okay, it's Hebrew 7, 8, 4. Of course, fire, flames. But then you had that supernatural fire. Supernatural fire accompanying the offending. We're going to go into that. Fire, of course, for cooking, roasting, parching. But then you have also altar fire and Yahweh's anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another part of this definition that I didn't put here just yet. But we're going to go ahead and attack that altar fire first. Okay? We're going to hit that altar fire and then we're going to get into the rest of it. Now, this altar fire, let's go to Leviticus. Hallelujah. Leviticus 10, 1 through 3. And Nadab and Abihu, sons of Aaron, mm -hmm. took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered what? Strange, strange fire. fire. I always wondered what this strange fire was. You know what I mean? Strange. Before Yahweh, which he commanded them not. Mm. And there went out a fire from Yahweh and devoured them, and they died before Yah. Listen to this. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is that Yahweh spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh to me. Huh? 
that come nigh to me and before all the people I will be glorified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Aaron, both his sons just got burnt. They both died. Aaron did what? He held his peace. It's the reason why he held his peace. Huh? Now mind you, these, these brothers put forth strange fire. Like I said, I wonder what this strange fire was. But in verse 3, you see Yahweh, I mean, Moses said that this is what Yahweh spoke of. He's reminding them. And this is what Yahweh spoke of. And I will be sanctified and I will be glorified. Huh? Exodus 19, 22. And let the priests also, which come near to Yahweh, sanctify themselves, lest Yahweh break forth upon them. Lest y'all break forth upon them. When we set up our fire, we give it up praises, huh? Yes, sir, sir. How much of your praise is strange? Uh oh. You putting up strange fire when you licking your hands? Uh oh. Anybody ever thought about that straightway S how it's like a little sort of like a flame of fire? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you ever notice how in fire when you watch fire it has a uncontrollable <coughs> wave? Yeah. That's how we should be when we praise it. Hmm? Look at the flame of fire and then check yourself out. Ooh. Imagine how David danced. Yep, that's how he danced. Imagine how he did it. Ooh. He had to have some kind of fire in there Ooh. in order to sit there and move like that until he got to his draw. Huh? I'm just saying. So Yahweh told them right there, Exodus 19 22, that he will be sanctified for those who come near him. Are we trying to come near him? Yeah. Are we trying to come nigh? Yes, we are. Do we want him to be near us? Yes, sir. Not only in our mouths, but right here in our hearts, huh? Yes, sir. So if we're going to sanctify ourselves and glorify him, it best not be strange. Uh -huh. hmm? It best not be strange. So, I was checking it out. Like I told you, I was wondering. I want to know a little bit more about this here strange fire. Okay? So I went to Josephus. I just wanted to see what, you know, he said, what it says on the account. In book 3, chapter 8, Paragraph 7. I hope that's the right way of putting it. I'm going to read that real quick. Hereupon an affliction befell Aaron, <coughs> considered as a man and a father, but was undergone by him with true fortitude, for he had indeed a firmness of soul in such accidents, and he thought this calamity came upon him according to Yah's will. For whereas he had four sons, as I said before, the two elder of them, Nadab and Abihu, we just talked about them, did not bring those sacrifices which Moses bade them to bring. Hmm? He bade them to bring the right sacrifices. Hallelujah. But which they used, but they, I'm sorry, but, um, okay, they didn't have to be who did not bring those sacrifices which Moses bade them to bring, but which they used to offer formally, and they were burnt to death. You know what this reminds me of? Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. You read Joshua. Did not Cain give the inferior of his fruit? He still gave a sacrifice. He still, he still gave it up. We still praise, don't we? Now he gave the inferior. He didn't want to give God the best. You see what I'm saying? He didn't want to give the best. Some people's praises are fake. Some people's praise is strange. Because like Pastor said too many times, more often than not, you say you know him, but does he know you? You can praise in our face. You can lift up your dirty hands all you want. You are the one that's responsible for whether or not it is strange. Uh, we just need to be thankful that, well, I don't know how thankful we're going to be. Uh, we need to be glad that the fire ain't coming down and consuming us like them. Uh, this is y'all's anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Now look at this. I'm going to go back there. Nadab and Abihu who did not bring those sacrifices which Moses bade them to bring, but which they used to offer formally. Now mind you, this is also like Eli. His sons wanted the best of the meat and didn't want to give it to Yah. Yeah, yeah. Huh? So why are you going to go over here and they having to be who and use the former stuff? Uh -huh. Not what Moses told you to. Huh? That's right. 
Yahweh tells us all the time just by way of the word. Now, didn't Jesus tell them they got Moses? They got the prophets. <laughs> they don't hear them. They don't hear them. So guess what? We do have instruction. We have instruction in the word. The word gives enough instruction as it is. Right down the pages, huh? Now, we don't abide by it, but then we come to by service. Mm. Lifting our hands up, giving this strange fire. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Then what? Burn oh, just because you're still here. Just because you're still breathing. Ooh. Just because you're like, I'm going to go to mm. bed tonight and I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning. I'm going to be all right. You take it for granted. Hmm? Mm. So listen to this. Now, when the fire rushed up on them. Listen to this, man. When the fire rushed up on them and began to burn them, nobody, nobody could quench it. Nobody could put that fire out. According, they died in this manner. And Moses did bid their father. Here you go. Remember, remember, remember we read a minute ago. He kept his peace, huh? Moses did bid their father and brethren to take up their bodies to carry them out of the camp and to bury them magnificently. Now the multitude lamented them and were deeply affected in, at, at their death, which so unexpectedly befell them. But Moses entreated their brethren and their father not to be troubled for them mm -hmm. and to prefer the honor of God before their grief about them. So you need to make sure you honor Yah over your grief. Mm -hmm. For Aaron had already put on his sacred garments. So he didn't want Aaron to step forth in his sacred garments and then he get himself burnt up, huh? You know? And he definitely didn't want to be unclean before a dead body. So when I'm sitting here reading this, I'm like, okay, I get it. So there are certain sacrifices that I've seen that. <laughs> now there are certain sacrifices they were supposed to bring. There are certain sacrifices in our minds, in the battlefield here, in this heart, that we're supposed to bring here. Okay? Just because when you're getting burnt up right now, that don't mean take it for granted. That don't mean take it for granted whatsoever at all. Because we don't want to have the rock fall upon us. It's better for us to fall on the rock. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we should want that fire. Fire. That's what we should want. And want to keep it at the same time. <coughs> but check out what Jeremiah can say about this as well. Huh? You good, bro. So the saints can see. Jeremiah 4, 3 through 4. For thus says Yahweh to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. Mm -hmm. Circumcise yourselves to Yah and make and take away the foreskin of your heart. You men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Mm. Now, how many of us in here was doing evil all week, but we came in here and prayed? How many of us in here can really truly say that we've given up good fire? Mm. Good fire. Yeah. Or is it strange? Mm. It's up to you to figure that out. It's up to you to make sure you keep that fire lit. Hallelujah. Now back to fire. In the Hebrew, we're going to hit that accompanying theophany here soon, but the, the, the definition that we now didn't put in the first one is right here. Okay? Used, fire used of war. Consumed with fire. Splendor and brightness. Gems of a fiery splendor. Internal our door of the mind. Fire. The our door of the mind, or our door is spelled many different ways, is feelings of great intensity and warmth. When you feel him, when you know he's in there. If he is in there, you will feel him. And when you do not feel him, when you get up in the morning, you feel some kind of way. Yes, you do. I do. When you're trying to touch him in your closet and he don't touch you, that don't feel good. It's like a woman with a husband and the husband don't want to touch her. Guess what? She don't feel too good. She don't get a chance to get that frenzy. Mm -hmm. Fervor. I look behind fervor and fervor is great intensity of feeling or belief. So you got you to gotta have that fire with fervor. 
Eagerness. Zeal. And if you have the zeal, trust me, there ain't going to be nothing to keep that fire from you. Especially since y'all was readily available at all times. He's always there. Even when we ain't ready, he is. Yeah. Uh, Extreme vigor or energy. It's like when you're feeling, you feel those goosebumps and you know, you feel you, you can feel the spirit when it's going, when it's coming in, you feel that fire. That's it. You know what I mean? The Theophany. A manifestation or appearance of Yah. We're gonna get into that too. Or like it says in the English, a God or for for us, Yah, to a person. Accompanying. Accompanying. Anybody got a uh, KJV? Yes, sir. Deke, I want you to get Second Chronicles 6, 40 through 42. <coughs> you know you there. Everybody do so far? Yes, yes sir. sir. Second Chronicles 6, 40 through 42. Yes, sir. 2 Chronicles 6, 40 through 42. Yes, sir. Now, my God, let I beseech thee, thine eyes be open. Mm -hmm. Let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Made in this place. Now, mind you, it's made in this place because they just built the temple. Yeah. Hmm? So now he's asking, he's praying to Yahweh at the temple and everything has been in all the victuals and everything was placed, placed in this proper place. Now he's praying to Yahweh. Go ahead. Now therefore arise, O Yahweh. Rise. Elohim. Let Yah rise. Mm -hmm. Into thy resting place. Mm -hmm. Thou. Resting place. Yeah. And the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests. O Yahweh, Elohim, be clothed with salvation. Mm -hmm. And let thy saints rejoice in goodness. Goodness. O Yah, Elohim, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. Your servant. Now mind you, he's praying to Yah. Remember the mercies of your servant, David. Hmm? Now listen to this. He just finished building the temple. What are your bodies? Of the temple of the Holy Spirit. Some of us should make sure that Yah was doing a temple service in us. Better make sure because this is what should be happening in your temple. Second Chronicles seven. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire. The fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of Yahweh filled the house. Filled it. This is what should be going on in your temple. In you. You should want the glory of Yahweh to fill you up. You should want the glory and the fire of Yah, This fire, this consuming fire to consume that old person, that old man you are today. To consume him so whole that the Holy Spirit would have all that room in that temple of yours to rule. And the priest could not enter into the house because of the glory of Yahweh had filled Yahweh's house. It filled it up. Shemaim answered for Solomon. He appeared unto him. Hmm? He appeared unto him. But look at this. <coughs> Manifestation. Appearance of Yah. Theophany. Now, they seen the appearance of Yahweh. Even the priest can go in because it was so filling. So filling. So, where's the manifestation of the appearance of Yah in you? Mm -hmm. To the point where Yahweh should see a reflection of himself in you. Mm -hmm. Like a mirror. Mm -hmm. If he looks at you, he should see a reflection of him. Mm -hmm. If you're walking right. Yeah. If you're talking right. If you do what you say. Mean what you say. Say what you mean. Just like I was talking about a word of bond. Because your word is bond, huh? Straight up. Skipping down to verse 12 through 20. Thus Solomon finished the house of Yahweh and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of Yah. And in his own house, he prosperously affected. Pay attention to that. Say it again. 
Thus Solomon finished the house of Yah and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of Yah. It got to come into your heart to fix you in whatever area you need fixing. It needs to come from your heart. It needs to be in there. If you don't want to be changed, it's because it ain't in your heart to do it. And your temple going to stay defiled. It's going to stay having the idols in the walls and the crevices of that temple. Hmm? And Yahweh appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard your prayer. I want my prayers heard. And have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. We on sanctified land right now. The house of sacrifice. That's why I say, are you giving up strange fire? Hmm? If I shut up heaven that there be no rain and if I command that locusts to devour the land or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Heal their land. Mm -hmm. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Contrite heart, he's not going to turn away. That's if it's contrite. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house. I want to be sanctified right here. We are all little sanctuaries. That's exactly what should be going on. Right there. For now I have chosen to sanctify this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. But Saul, he left him. He left Saul, did he not? Now he left Saul, he departed. But right here he's saying his heart shall be there perpetually. But that's if we what? Humble ourselves. Yep. Humble ourselves, pray and seek his face. And as for you, if you will walk before me as David your father walked mm -hmm. and do according to all that I have commanded you and shall observe my statutes and my judgment, then will I establish the throne of your kingdom according as I have covenanted with David your father, saying, There shall not fail you a man to be ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods, and worship them, then I will pluck them up by the roots out of my hand, which I have given them in this house, which I have sanctified for my name, I will cast out of my sight, and I will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. I don't want to be cast away from the Most High. I do not desire to be a castaway whatsoever at all. But may we take this stuff for granted. We take the statutes and laws and everything else for granted because we're still here and we're still breathing. I'm telling you. Dick, you want to get Matthew 3, 10 through 12? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, I go ahead and I go ahead and knock it out. I got it right here. Listen to what Jesus said, man. And now also the axe is laid up unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which brings forth, brings not forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. Mm -hmm. Now look at this. Already flipping it. I indeed baptize you with water to, unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So, some going to get cast into the fire, but then he's going to baptize you who want to be here, who want to be holy, with fire as well. He's a consuming fire. He's going to consume you from being wicked, or he's going to consume that old man that you was, and you're going to become a new person. That's it. You're going to become somebody new. That's it. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. I don't want to be in that crowd. I don't know about you. Not at all. Not at all. 
not whatsoever at all. But that accompanying theophany, that's him in you. That's yeah. accompanying him accompanying you. Just like he accompanied the man Jesus. Hmm? He had the he had the real accompanying theophany. Because of course when the when the Holy Spirit fell upon him in a bodily form, like it says in the book of Luke 3, he walked from there on. He had that accompanying theophany, and nobody can deny it. That's why they had to chalk up charges to kill him. But what, he, but what John's saying right here, that's two kind of fires right there. So which one you want to be? Consumed because of wickedness? Or consumed, that old man consumed and burnt up and dying? Just like a behu. Just like Nadab. When nobody can quench it. Or do you want to be consumed of that old man, consumed of that old woman, consumed to the point where everybody can notice that, oh man, that's a new man. That's a new woman. Oh no, that woman's doing wonderful. Oh, that brother's doing wonderful. Because it's easily seen in Israel. You should want this. You should want that fire. That fire of the spirit. That fire that will consume you. That fire that is going to be with you perpetually. But you can't you also can't let it go out either. If you let that fire go out, there's no guarantee that you may get it back. No guarantee. Now you do have to light it back up. But what if you take your last breath? Can you light it up then? Nope. Might as well light it up now. Light it up right now. And if you ain't baptized with fire, you best get it while you're living still. While you're in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Told y'all I wasn't going to be before y'all too long. No. See, this time I kept my word. <laughs> I kept my word this time. Yeah. I can't put a whole lot more in it. 